Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2. Recognized, Joe Moniak, D, 0, 5. Hello team. We hope you enjoy this extra indulgence from the Season 2 team. We recorded this end of Season 2 Intel update a while ago, but due to life, work, family illnesses, etc., it's been in a file waiting to be edited. So you may hear us reference upcoming events in the far-flung future of last month in November, (laughs) so don't be confused. And of course, as soon as we're ready to release this, we get the first inkling of news about Young Justice Outsiders. Uh, That inkling... Greg Weissman suspects Outsiders will be releasing in the fourth quarter of 2018, per a Twitter conversation he had this week. Other than that, there isn't much to report. Our goal is to continue to release weekly until Outsiders airs and already have our schedule planned out through July. So stay tuned for more comic commentary, secret origins, super sweethearts, discussion sessions, and hopefully even more. Thanks everyone for an incredible 2017. And my personal thanks to Caleb, Neil, Emily, Richard, Ryan, Emily Mio, Kevin, Maddie, and all of our incredible guests. It has been and always will be an honor working with you. Happy New Year, everyone. Initiate Intel Update. Hello, team. Welcome to Intel Update number eight. One year and 100 episodes of Whelmed. I'm here with two of my favorite superheroes who are making me laugh (laughs) pre-Mike, Neil and Emily. Hey, everybody. I don't know what what I'm supposed to say. Aren't you reading your script, Neil? I put a thing in. I'm not going to read that. It says, yo, 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 what's up, whatever. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea what you would say. I could totally make stuff up and say, like, the man behind the scenes, the man behind two screens. Meanwhile, I've become predictable. Nice. Hey, why don't we start from there? Predictabilities. Intel update. Real quick, let's go over what's going on in uh, our lives. Neil, what exciting thing has come up with you? I decided to beat Whelmed to the punch, and the podcast that I typically do, DMnastics, the gym for dungeon masters to work out their minds, uh, had their 100th episode, and it was amazing. And thanks for coming back on, Rich. Oh, sure. Yeah, you had um, you had a bunch of uh, previous guests come on and uh, do some random exercises. It was pretty cool. Yeah, original co-host came back on after man, he's been gone for probably eight nine 50 months. Episodes. Yeah, yeah. So had him back on, and that was a lot of fun. And yeah, just it was great to have that many people back on. I'm not going to say it was great to edit, but the finished product was <laughs> fantastic. It was pretty great. Uh, and DMnastics, uh, we've talked about a couple times on the show, but um, from a writing standpoint, these writing prompts that DMnastics, particularly the Twitter feed, puts up every day is pretty amazing. So if you're looking for, I mean, mostly fantasy related stuff, but like if you're looking for writing prompts to stimulate writing exercises, yeah, dive on and uh, and check it out. Do it. Do it now. Anything else going on, Neil? No. Well, I mean... Yeah, a ton of stuff always, but because I keep doing the actual main podcast, the Dungeon Masters Block, I'm the project manager for our mutual friend, J.M. Perkins, for his Kickstarter, Salt and Wounds. I still have a a 40-hour-a-week job. I have two children, so I drink a lot of caffeine. Yes. A lot. A lot of cold brew or something. Monsters, what's your your caffeine of choice? I have a rock star right now. There you go. Perfect. Sponsorship? <laughs> Maybe Ooh. personal sponsorship. Just a sticker. I'd be fine with the, with the free stickers. <laughs> nice. So, Emily, what's going on with you out in the uh, out in the podcast world? So, podcast world, uh, I recently, we just wrapped up the airing of my little guest spot over on She's a Super Geek. That was yeah. super fun. Yes. It was really where I good. Played, I played Shiree who was an outsider alien who was very fun to play. And I ho- and people have apparently been really enjoying that one, which is really nice to hear. As it was it was a lot of fun. And I think it, start, it started off like a lot of Masks games. I feel like a lot of Masks games start this way. Like they start off a little bit on the fun, silly side. And then by like the end of the first like game you play, it's all like <laughs> sad and 
cool and dramatic and I was like, oh, I'm going to be on this podcast with these people that are so cool and I really admire them. I hope I make a good impression. Oh, we're having fun. Oh, I'm I'm crying in front of people. Oh, (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm I'm an empath who's also an actor. This just happens sometimes. Uh, That ending was uh, was pretty great. And it's begging for a sequel. So please do a sequel. Um, I'd be up for it. it It's not my decision, but I am always happy to come back and play her. I would I would very much love to continue Shiree's story. Yeah. What was kind of fun on the Young Justice standpoint was, of course, you were playing an outsider with an alien spaceship, but you weren't entirely like McGann in any way. But what I found was interesting when I was listening to it was the three of you, your characters were all like three different facets of McGann. Yep. And when you when you pointed that out to me, I then went and wrote it up on Twitter and was like, it goes way deeper than I thought it did. Because the thing that yeah. freaked me out when I, when I started thinking about it too hard and posted about it was my character, Shiree, besides being an outsider and an alien who doesn't fully understand Earth, had a crush on the moody one with a dog. And yep. like it, I was like, "Oh, oh, wow, that was unintentional." But yep. okay, I'm just, wow. Now yeah. people people were asking online a little bit about what inspired her as a character, and it was definitely Miss Martian because I love my girl. Uh, yeah, of course. But somebody pointed out that there was a little bit of like Teen Titans, the TV show Starfire, in there, and yep. I hadn't been thinking about it. it. Was like, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. And the other thing that people, I didn't think. A lot of people don't know about it, but there was a comic from Marvel called A-Force for a little while, a couple of years ago, that was an all-female superhero team. And one of the characters in that was a character called Singularity, who was just a pocket dimension, essentially, in humanoid, in humanoid form as a oh. teenage girl who just really believed in friendship and caring about people and keeping her team together and, like being made of hope and happiness. And she was like this all powerful being that could have literally destroyed the entire planet if she'd thought about it. But she yeah. didn't. She just believed people were inherently good and wanted to help things. And I was like, I want to play a character who is filled with that much positive energy about the yeah. world. So that was part of going into that and playing her. Uh, it was great, guys. Go check that out for sure. The f- they were actually playing different aspects of May. Mag- I can- oh, I can do it with a straight face. They were actually playing everyone as Magan, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> instead of everybody's John. They played a game of that before, and little did right. we know, it right. was actually just one it, person. It wasn't multiple masks, personalities, no. right? Oh. Yeah, everyone is John is this really interesting game where everybody's playing aspects of one person's personality and trying to uh, gain control of the single person <laughs> over time. Uh, the the One Shot Podcast Network did a great reskin of Everyone is John called Everyone is Joker, and it was multiple personalities in Joker's head. It was fantastic. I listened to that one. Yeah, it was fun. It was awesome, yeah. And, God, for me, um, Don't Split the Podcast Network is airing soon, I think. My uh, From the Depths of the Empire aquatic-themed Edge of the Empire actual play. Mm. There was, um, it's on Twitch or YouTube. I'm not sure how it works. Does Twitch upload to YouTube? Only if you make it. Oh, okay. So you can go look at it on the Twitch stream, but there was a bunch of audio problems. So I'm hoping, like, we were all uh, recording individually as well, and so I think the podcast version of it's going to be much, much easier to follow and to to listen to. So you can check that out. It's funny because as of us recording today, we just released the interview with James Tricasso, who is who is from the Don't Split the Podcast Network. So he's going to be putting that together. Uh, and then I'm going to be st- I'm starting to run uh, along with my co creators online playtests of Descent into Midnight, which is our Powered by the Apocalypse game we're working on currently. And uh, Patreon backers, both from my personal Patreon and from the Whelmed Patreon, are invited to join. So there's uh, messages out if you're already on the Patreon and you haven't checked it in a little while, go check it out. And we're going to have some playtests. And Emily's laughing at me. Why are you laughing at me, Emily? I also wanted to ask you guys, like, what you're listening to recently. Is there anything in particular you've been listening to on other podcasts that you might be wanting to recommend? Because I've picked up a couple recently that have been so good. I'm going to open... 
my podcast app and see what I've got here. Oh. Nice. Hey, Neil, what do you got off the top of your head? I was going to say that then Emily and I are doing the same thing. Well, I'll start then because the two the two that pop into my head immediately just started. So they're great. They're like, going to be jump- the two I was going to say too. Darn it. Go ahead. Probably. Oh, sorry. No, one I is called... One of one of it's called um, Protean City, yeah. uh, or Protean City Comics, which is a masks uh, role playing game put on by that the Stop Hack and Roll podcast. Um, it just started recently, and man, if you just want to check it out just to see what it's like, they did these really short little character introduction scenes that are like maybe ten minutes at the most. But they've got all of like the high production quality and the music and that that dude's intro voice, which is amazing. Are you it's here fantastic. For a daring adventure. A daring adventure, and teen angst. Yeah, it's yes, uh, it, yes we are. Uh, so go check that out. Protean City Comics is what that one is, and the other one, <laughs> the other one is. Um, you know what? I'll let I'll let Emily talk about that if, one. You take you, that okay, one. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other one that both me and Rich have started listening to, and that Rich tweeted about when I was literally like two minutes into the first episode, we apparently had just synced minds for a minute and both decided to listen to it on the same day, is called Wander Quest, uh, and it is a D&D 5th edition actual play podcast of four incredible women playing a very, very cool and emotionally intense Jeez. game of D&D. Yeah. Uh, that just started, and it made it made Rich cry while driving. It didn't make me cry <laughs> only because I had warning and I was kind of listening yeah. to it in fits and starts throughout the day because I did not have enough time to sit down and listen to it all the way through. But it it brought it brought me to the edge of tears on some of some of those character introduction episodes because they yeah. also ran fabulous. Uh, little little one shots of the backstories of each each member of the team of kind of how they became an adventurer and why they were setting out on the main plot of the show at this point right. that were just a great idea in and of themselves and also were quite emotional cuz that's what happens yeah they were crazy that the first one i i was I listen to a lot of my podcasts when I drive around at my job on the weekend, and I had to pull my car over at the end of the first one, Astrid's, because of some things happened at the end, and I took like 15 minutes to just recover and was like posting all over Twitter about it. The thing is, if, you're, if you've never played Dungeons and Dragons before, this is not really a mechanics-heavy game, and those four introductory episodes are a little more like radio drama you know, kind of, kind of improv. It's basically an improv scene between the two, between the DM and, and the individual player. So there's no mechanics in those first opening things. So you really like dive into the emotional punch of these people's lives before they get out. And they've only aired a couple of episodes of the regular um, adventure and it's fantastic. So go check those two out. Those are my two recommendations. And I have one other one that is not a new thing I've been listening to. I've actually been listening to it for a while. I think it was actually the first podcast I started listening to, but I always like sending it people's ways because I think it's very cool. That is a podcast called Singing Bones that has a very sporadic upload schedule, but whenever a new episode comes out, I am very happy. That is about fairy tales and about fairy tales, how they develop over time, what they meant when they were first created, why they were first created, where their origins come from, how we as a society interpret them now and what their historical and cultural influences have been both on the story itself and the story on society. And those are fascinating and really awesome. And they're produced by this really cool woman in Australia who has a very calming voice. So they're nice to listen to. You can just sit down with a (laughs) cup of tea and be like, yes, please tell me about the werewolf references in Little Red Riding Hood and how they are connected to witch trials. Please tell me all of this awesome information. You've you've recommended this podcast to me a couple of times and I just have not gotten a chance to listen to it yet. And every time you describe it, I cannot figure out why I haven't listened to it yet. And then I remember it's probably time. And they're real good. They're only about like 20 to 25 minutes, except her Little Mermaid episode that was two parts. Yeah, very nice. What about you, Neil? 
That just makes me want to go listen to everything from Lore again by Aaron Mankey. It's like Lore from what I've heard about Lore, mm. but less scary. Because <laughs> yes. like I can't listen to Lore because Lore freaks me out. I tried it once and was like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, which, yeah, definitely listen to Lore. Not that Aaron Mankey needs additional promotion. He's now doing a television show for Amazon based on the podcast. So I think he's okay. The other one that I have started listening to and finally caught up on is the venture maidens. So it's another, oh, yeah. um, D and D actual play with all women running it. And, uh, Celeste Conowich is the DM and, or which she refers to herself as the dungeon mistress, which makes me super happy. And it is another really good one. A lot, um, sounds a little lighter than, uh, wander quest, but <laughs> yeah. that's okay. You got to mix it up or else you don't get a drive anywhere it sounds like yeah absolutely yeah actually i listen to venture maidens as well and venture maidens is also fantastic and they actually do their show live i wish i don't know the times they do their live their show live Mm -hmm. on twitch and then they also release the podcast edited um later in the same week or the following week i think yeah the it's i don't know if it's quite consistent on twitch but they're pretty good about it announcing it days in advance on their social media so you can definitely check it out there yeah also yeah, i'm i'm right. listening to a ton of fantasy football podcasts but that doesn't really mean <laughs> anything to most people <laughs> It's like critical role uh, that brought me to tears a few weeks ago with their campaign finale oh god yeah Check them yeah. out. They're on podcasts now, kind of. <laughs> yeah. A little Cry short, along with short, me. Short form, four hour podcast episodes. No, like if people who follow me for Young Justice stuff were wondering why I was sobbing at three in the morning on Twitter, it was because of Critical Role. Oh, we were all just tweeting our sadness and pain. What were you going to say, Neil? I said, like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's just a quick 400 hour investment. You got this. Yeah. I oh, got yeah, in yeah. on the ground floor and stuck with it. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad that you did. Yeah. Um, so before we get on to some of the other stuff we want to do for this uh, one-year celebration, I'm going to talk about Season 3 details, which are, yet again, pretty much nothing. So if you've been listening to us, if you're listening to this Intel update, hoping there's going to be something new, unfortunately, there's just not. Details keep cycling through the internet, like on like current articles, but their current articles are referring to interviews that happened back at San Diego Comic-Con. So, I mean, Emily, have you heard anything? Because I have a bunch of like alerts set out and (laughs) nothing has been new. I haven't heard anything, but sort of Young Justice news. People may be interested in it. Christopher Jones created a bunch of new Young Justice inspired prints that you can go look at that are all really cool and available on his Etsy shop and his various things. So if you're like, oh, I want new Young Justice things and haven't seen anything you like, he's got some really cool ones that are like the Flash family and he did a Bat family one and he did the whole light as a group that I personally love all of Christopher Jones' art prints that he puts out because they just fill me with so much joy. They're all great. He's done a lot of really cool ones that I'm always like, I need need to buy and then I never get around to because I don't have money and time. Um, But like, if you're like, I want to see a cool new thing, go find Christopher Jones on his various social media and look at those because they're cool. On that same note, actually, I just today posted... An artist, a uh, friend of mine, Jacob Blackman, who's a friend of the show and one of our Patreon, he was our first Patreon backer, I think. He sent me a link to, um, there's a fantastic cosplay group called the Shawshank Cosplay Group. And uh, you can go check our Twitter account uh, and probably, hopefully soon on the Tumblr too and on our Facebook page. There's links to this Black Manta armor that this group came up with and these photo shoots they did at the beach it is absolutely mind-blowing like uh, black manta does not have an easy outfit it seems like it might be and you could probably do a simplistic version of it they did not go simplistic by any means the helmet is stunning the red lights and the visor are incredible like definitely pop over to one of our social media's outlets and and link on that And then, uh, so aside from no news on Young Justice, I also wanted to talk about a little bit about some of the upcoming stuff that we have coming up. (laughs) The long-awaited and long-overdue 
Uh, Kid Flash Secret Origin has been recorded and should be airing on uh, November 1st, uh, I believe. Uh, plus or minus one week there. Should be November 1st, I think. Uh, we have discussions with uh, Michael Ross from the RPG Academy coming up. Michael Ross is uh, Caleb's uh, co-host for the RPG Academy on the other network that he does. Um, we have uh, one of the cast members from Chaotically Neutral, which is another Masks actual play that just started coming out. We have Secret Origins coming up for Roy and Zatanna and Rocket, as well as the uh, Chalant Super Sweethearts, I think, is airing later in November. Uh, maybe early it's December. Air- it's Aaron... When it happens, I don't want to make promises like the Kid Flash Secret Origins. It's like, guys, I want to get it out to you. And I know a lot of people are very excited because we all do love us some Dick Grayson and Zatanna. They are very cute. But I am back at college and have finals (laughs) and course selection and rehearsals and everything that I do. So I'm like, on the list of things that need to get done... Finals and course selection is above the Chalant Super okay. Sweethearts. All right, Sorry, well, I, I may have I may have jumped the gun on that one. Sorry, it's happening. We have it. I we have it in a tentative happening. schedule. <laughs> My bad. Uh, but at the end of December, we'll be starting. If not, maybe a little bit sooner. Actually, we will be starting our reviews of the Young Justice tie-in comics. Um, Emily and I have already recorded several, and we're going to be recording another one today. So we've got them in the can already. We. Cannot recommend you highly enough that you pop yes. over to Comixology to go pick them up and read them beforehand because there is a lot going on in these yeah. comics. Uh, and I cannot wait, hopefully, to see even more of them. Just the one we're recording today, which is um, the team sitting around on a camping trip around the fire talking about their origins, is yeah. so pack- packed full yeah. of... Easter eggs and Mm -hmm. implications. Uh, Yeah, craziness. So definitely go pick those things up if you haven't already. And then... um, Do it. Yes. And then uh, I think we'll be releasing the audio soon for our... That was our first Patreon Masks game, uh, guest starring uh, Cam Bowen uh, with some of our Patreon backers. Right, Neil? What's the story on that? Yep. The story is, yes, I was just making sure... Everyone, and because we have our Patreon backers in there, that everyone was comfortable with all the audio because we are nice people and we don't want to put things out <laughs> right. on the internet that people wouldn't want <laughs> out on the internet. So it should be released very soon because I believe we've gotten the thumbs up from everyone. So Awesome. And then uh, our the second uh, session, our second quarterly game is also scheduled. And I know you guys are talking behind the scenes about yeah. getting that organized as well. Okay. Yeah. Going to have a new team member join in our little group once we figure some stuff out with that. And that's going to be fun. And we're going to go have an adventure and Another hopefully game. make good choices. Unlike all of the no, bad terrible choices, choices I made in the first one. No, terrible choices are the white, best. White Rabbit's catchphrase became, I'm going to try something stupid. And everybody nice. just was like, yeah, do it. I'm do like, this it. Is, this is how bad things keep happening, guys. It's fantastic. Yeah, I don't think we can play in a game together because I don't remember which it was for the GM showcase, the actual play we did. But then I remember I had a cool catchphrase, but my real catchphrase turned into no. <laughs> 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 so we should probably not be on the same team. It, it'll be for the best. That's hilarious. I just, I had, I just kept doing, you're like, here's the situation. And my mind literally was like, you know, it would be fun. No, don't do it. It's dumb. And I at least once in that game said, I have something in mind, but it's stupid. So I won't. And everyone in the group chat went, no, do it. It's like in the masks AP where you had all these choices. But one of the choices was lose control of your powers. And everyone was all, yes, that's the one. And that's where we get the phrase, everyone's so excited to see me have an emotional (laughs) breakdown. That's right. Yay. Because it was the best. It was pretty good. (laughs) All right. So that's all of our kind of upcoming details that I can think of uh, for the show coming up. We, of course, have uh, we went through and we have scheduled weekly released material for the next like 10 months. Mm-hmm. So we have even more more material coming until we get our season three. But the next segment we wanted to do was a little bit of a flashback. And I wanted to talk a little bit, particularly particularly with Neil and also Emily, um, because we don't get Neil on the show very often. 
And then both of you guys started working on Whelmed uh, well into or after, not really after, I guess well into or toward the end of season one. What were you, so Neil, what were you doing before Whelmed? Oh, well, yeah, that goes back to doing Diamnastics and the Dungeon Masters block for, geez, almost two years now or more. No, because if I've been doing Diamnastics for two years, so yeah, about two years doing that podcast and doing a lot of editing for them. And then, of course, being on mic and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But that's about it. Well, but the most, I think the most interesting thing here, Neil, is how did you get involved with podcasting in the Dungeon Masters Block Network? Ah, through using one of the most cliche lines and being very genuine about it. So I present, I was a fan. I joined the forums, was very active. And then I honestly just reached out and said that I appreciate what they do. I would like to be involved and quote, we'll do anything that would be helpful. And that was editing. And they didn't know it at the time, but I had done very little to no audio editing before that. But <laughs> um, I had been working in IT for the better part of a decade. So I felt comfortable with just learning it. And I was very slow uh, in my ability to produce audio. Now I am, I, I don't know if I'm better, but I'm way faster. So oh my God. at least I got that on my side. And here's the other thing, too. Didn't you guys just have someone else join your team that basically did the same thing? Yeah. Like, I just basically offered up, like, a very genuine and honest, like, look, I want to be able to help you guys do this thing. Is there something I can do to help? Yeah. And so we've had a couple people reach out in that way. Someone that helped me a little bit with the DMnastic stuff because they were very open on Twitter just saying, I'm willing to help in whatever way helps you the most. And we had someone do the same with our web design because we, I it just it was never gotten into that on the IT side of things and no one else had. And so he just offered it up and like, that's the thing he loves to do. So um, shout out to Ryan, AKA DM Lord Neptune, which I assume yeah, it, you appreciate because. Uh, yeah, I know <laughs> I do Lord Neptune. Yeah. Um, so. And then, which actually leads me into how you got involved with our show. Cause it was pretty much the same thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, because I knew that it was getting harder and harder for Caleb to produce the podcast. So I just reached out and actually had that conversation face to face, which here in the podcasting world, that's just insanity. <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, we happened to be at the same convention. So we had a discussion and then I started editing the discussions. Yeah. So I guess the reason I wanted to bring that up was because Man, the a, a genuine offer of help, like genuinely offering to help because you're a fan of a thing and seeing if there's something that you do that you can help with, as long as you're okay with being, as the answer being, you know, no, we're good. Like, I mean, you never know what that might lead to. And it's basically made Neil the incredible producer of our show that yes. he is. So next time, like if you have a thing, let people know that you enjoy it and see if there's something you can do to help out with the thing. You never know where it'll lead you, which leads me to Emily. What were you doing before Whelmed, Emily? So, <laughs> so I was just your average college student, being a college student, loving Young Justice, and I stumbled across Whelmed right after Thanksgiving of last year. So I've been around for a while. I listened. Oh yeah, it we was just, it was we had just, just after the season three announcement had like happened, and everybody knew season three was happening. And it was right after a family Thanksgiving gathering, and I was like, "Oh, we're gonna have the ride home. I need something to listen to in the car." And I was like, "Hmm, I wonder if there's a Young Justice podcast because season three had just been announced, so it was on my mind." I'm like, "I'll just." search on my app i'll see if there's something and you guys came up and i was like oh this looks really cool oh and there are only a few episodes in i can i can tackle that pretty easily so i just downloaded a few and listened to everything in like two days <laughs> so i've been i've been here a while i was you guys are only like a month into doing this because it's october when we're doing one year anniversary 
That's funny because I actually never, I've never asked you that question before. So uh, I did not know how you came across if someone had told you about us or if you had done a, done a search. I had done a search. So like when you, when you care about a thing, search for it. You never know what you're going to find. Miracle of living in the future. And then there's how I got involved with the show where the answer is literally by accident. Um, well, you think it was by accident. Seemed pretty deliberate to me. <laughs> so I just, I would just tweet things about the show. And I think the first thing that I actually tweeted at you guys that like was from my account and had my name attached to it and everything was a poster. I was like, you guys had a really insightful and interesting discussion of terrors, but you didn't talk about the super Martian kiss. And I feel oh, like right. the fact that that is the first thing I said to you guys yeah. Set the tone for how this was going to go down from then on. Yes. Like, no one is surprised. But then you took a, you wrote like a little small dissertation and like took a screenshot and sent it to us, didn't you? Yeah, that happened too, uh, where <laughs> after many an episode of hearing Rich and Caleb be like, I don't like Miss Martian in season one at the beginning. She seems really ditzy. And, blah, and I was like... I have been having this fight on the internet since I was 14. My time has come. <laughs> and I was just like, hey, I disagree. And you were like, oh, really? Why? And I wrote an essay. <laughs> you did. And it was very good. And it, it it gave me a different perspective. I won't say that it changed my view of her I, at the beginning. Have to. No, absolutely. But it gave me a perspective I didn't realize and that I did appreciate. My experience had been different just because I ran into, I felt like I ran into way too many characters who had these characteristics and these traits, and they were just the first go-to for every writer, it seemed like. And it was like, this is, guys, stop. Like, do something else. Um, but I appreciated this idea, particularly also backed by, because Danica McKellar also has the same opinion that she's posted about, about the idea that she can be have uh, strong feminine qualities and also, you know, tear airplanes out of the air with her mind, you know. I and I I appreciate my fictional role models that are allowed to do both cuz when you grow up yeah. female in with this stuff and are gravitating towards fantasy and superhero and sci-fi media, it's like women, if you want to be strong, you have to be strong and tough and tomboyish and I'm like, but I don't want to do that. Give me Miss right. Martian. Uh but before I go off on that rant, back to being, <laughs> back to, we've, we, I've had this rant before, guys, yes, and yes. if you want to hear it, I'll do it something with it. <laughs> uh, but back to getting involved with the show. After many a, many a tweet about the show and my thoughts on the show and various posted essays, because Twitter character limits are dumb when you're trying to have a big discussion, Rich invited me on to talk about shipping because that became... What I what I do and what Rich didn't know that much about. <laughs> and then after we finished a two hour recording talking about shipping and fan fiction and romance writing, Rich was like, hey, you want to co-host season two? And my mind shut down and I could not process that <laughs> as a concept. I should have took a screenshot of your face is what I should have done. That would have been fantastic. Out. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty great. I did. I like I blue screen of death for a minute there i was like wait wh what what i could not process things but you have all if you listen to other intel updates you've all heard the audio from heard, that heard the I audio from think that. to shut off my recording <laughs> and then was embarrassed I did that, on, that i, I did that on purpose actually it. um so that rolls into that rolls into my next question which is what's changed in your life since you uh joined whelmed uh who do we want to go with first me yeah, let's just stay. Let's just stick with you. I just I do want to point out though, with that, the one thing that's not on that audio clip that we have is that after that, and after I did finally stop recording, you said that you would like put together a resume of like why I should be a co-host or something like that, and sent it to Caleb and Neil, and I was like. What? You put together a resume for me? That's yeah, crazy. Basically. And I have never seen it. Uh, oh, it I don't know if it was an, I don't know if it was a written thing. <laughs> it may have been, but it was just like, these are the quality, these are the qualities we're looking for in a, in a co-host and uh, she's got them all. So <laughs> perhaps we should consider that. So yeah, 
people if are I can wondering find it, I'll send it to you. How the how the heck I got here? They d- d- talent scouted me without my knowledge and asked me to join the club. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, we did. And now I'm here. And what's changed? Well, now my life is ridiculous is the only word I have to describe <laughs> it. And I do that quite often when people are like, oh, what? what? When I tell my friends about the stuff that happens because of the show, they're like, what? How are you here? I don't I don't know. <laughs> you're here. You're here because you because you did the same thing Neil did, because you became genuinely involved with passion and interest about a thing. You per- you were participating. Yup. You know? Participate, kids. Like my the one thing that I can give advice to people on with any confidence is participate in the things you love. If you love the thing, talk about it. Care mm-hmm. deeply about things. Do not be apathetic towards the things that you like. Don't just be like, eh, it's whatever. Yeah. Care about it. Figure out how to express why you care about it in a thoughtful way. Because like I'm all for screaming on the internet about, OMG, I love the thing. But figure out why. Figure out how to express that and share it with people. Because inevitably, someone agrees with you. Someone doesn't agree with you. And there is the chance that somebody thinks it's cool enough that they actually want to collaborate on something And want you to show up on their show. And that's crazy. But it's awesome. Yep. That's the the true power of the internet. Right. The the, the power of the internet being used for good anyway. Yeah. It is also the power for bad. It is. But as for how the show has changed, anything with Whelms that's whelmed that has changed is that now we talk about romantic relationships because I insist on it. And I know there's probably people who listen who don't appreciate that, but I'm like, guys, you gotta, you gotta love it. Uh, you don't have to love it, but you have to at least tolerate me loving it. Well, I think, and I think that for me as a writer, the insights that I that I've gotten from listening to Super Sweethearts and hearing you talking about romantic story arcs on the show has been incredible because I've written short stories and I've written a novel. And the romantic aspects of them are actually really hard to deal with in a in a good, interesting way. Like, I can write about a lot of stuff, but that's not my strong suit. And um, getting that insight into the show is important because there's a lot going on in the show as far as family dynamics and other things. But the romantic aspects of the show are are front and center for everyone and matter, you know? So. Yep. Yeah, anyway. But yeah, we talk about that more. I somehow have more Twitter followers because some people think I'm interesting. And occasionally people ask me to come on other ta- other podcasts and talk about stuff. And I just, every time that happens, I'm like, what do you, what do you mean you want to hear more <laughs> from me? I what? like more participating. You want, what? People want <laughs> that? That's crazy. What about, what about you, Neil? What's changed since you've joined the show? Besides having less time in your life. Yeah. Um, for me, like the thing that changes, like I was so connected just to kind of the RPG community while doing podcasting. And this is like really branching it out and just getting connected with some of the voice actors in a new and different way has been really, really interesting, both from just seeing how it work, life, life works for them, as well as getting their audio, which is amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, because we you know we talk to a bunch of people that you know and this isn't their life this isn't what they do they still have tons of great things to tell us about but then when i get audio from someone who's like you know and crispin is a fantastic example you know and i've seen his website i know that the microphone he uses is almost four thousand dollars and like he sent me audio of like every kind and version and quality and i'm like rich we just need to get all voice actors all the time <laughs> Yeah. Uh, But yeah, no, those connections have been, I mean, super interesting and super crazy. Like Emily mentioned, it's just like these people listen to our thing and care and okay. Yeah. Ridiculous is the only word for my podcast life. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. And having like, you know, I think Caleb and I brought up Nicole Dubuque so many times in the first season and, um, 
and then, you know, finding out that she listens to the show and, and, um, it was just fantastic to hear that the writers of the show who we're hoping to get on soon just have like, they're listening to us critique their writing and listen to their writing and, and like, and then they're communicating to us about like the thought processes behind things and stuff like that. It's just beyond what I think any of us really thought of when Caleb, at least Caleb and I started the show, you know? So it's been fantastic. And the, and the whole crew for young justice has been amazing. I always I always joke that if I went back in time and talked to little me watching the first season of Young Justice, she would not believe this, any of yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah uh, for sure. Just be like, hey, you kid, keep keep watching that superhero show. Keep caring about that superhero show. Just just trust me, a thing's gonna happen. A couple of years ago, for me, I was doing seventy to eighty hours a week in a job that was literally killing me and thought I was going to be trapped there forever and then I left that and started the new job and decided this thing was going to happen and then did it and now I don't I can't yeah there's no way there's no way I would have grasped that this was going to be a thing back then well so so What are you doing? So for both of you guys, what are you doing now? What do you plan on doing creatively over the next year or two, at least the next year for sure? Like we're we're waiting for Young Justice season three. Like what what other things are you doing? Anything new you can talk about, Neil? Like, yeah, address one of us because otherwise we're both just going to be waiting for the other one. No, I I think I think the biggest thing is doing actually using for the first time my so I have two degrees. I have um a uh, bachelor's in business admin and I have an MBA. So actually using that for something in the RPG community has been really cool to help someone manage their Kickstarter and kind of do that. So I don't know. I don't know where that'll take me or not, but it's been super interesting to help out in that way. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a Kickstarter for something. I don't know. <laughs> just kidding. We're not going to do that. It's like spoilers for something that <laughs> isn't happening. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be doing a Kickstarter probably next year, so I think we'll be tapping you and your expertise if you are offering it. Yeah, so. I mean, we. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. See, the, so here's the other problem. Uh, fun fact: if you ever do start podcasting, get ready to feel like you can podcast for the rest of your life because you're going to come up with too many ideas for yes. too little time, and <laughs> I'm not helping you. All I'm going to do is try and help you realize it, and unfortunately, that's what I do for Rich. Um, so honestly, like if I was really going to focus on something and do something new in the next couple of years, I would be an actual play. I don't know what that yeah. looks like, but that's really something that's been on my mind to do, um, just because it is. So we'll see what that turns into. Yeah. We've had some talks about a few things. I, I have a, a idea I'm still banging around uh, and have touched base with a bunch of people on for a new podcast, uh, actual play series called System Expedition, where I'm actually having people who are experts in different systems that I have never played or experienced in my life come on and run a one shot uh, with some guests. And then me talking about kind of the development of the particular game and how it relates to other games and what the strengths are and Uh, potentially the weaknesses or or holes are in the system, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, Just getting the time to be able to record and, of course, edit, because I don't have a lot of editing skills because Caleb and Neil and uh, Richard Kreutz Landry have been helping me so much that I don't have those skills in hand. And then Descent into Midnight for gaming, uh, but I also have another Power by the Apocalypse game that I'm contemplating in my head that plays on the idea of real world kids going into a fantasy or sci-fi or fictional world of some sort, a la Narnia or the fantasy flight games, Grimm, that kind of thing, which I love that particular trope and idea. Uh, So I've been banging that around too. So again, trying to find the time, too many ideas, not quite Mm -hmm. enough time. Nope. So, and what about you, Emily? Well, I'm nowhere near as, cool as either of you 
Uh, um, <laughs> in that I am I am a college student. How many times can I say that in this? Well, in this it's intellect? true, but aren't you aren't you doing theater stuff too? Like, do you how do you, how does that work for college? Do you participate in plays? Are they little local things? Like anything like that? Like I have no idea how a theater major works. Oh, let's okay. Going into all this, so. As a as a college student, I barely know what I'm doing a month from now, let alone mm. in a year. So I that's that. always crazy. But in a month from now, I am currently in rehearsals for what on my campus is known as Play Fest. That is a every two years we do a big theater festival that is all student or alumni written shows uh, put on and performed by students our whole crew and directors and actors are all students occasionally with a few outside directors i think we have one outside director this year so i am in one of those which is incredible and it is an incredible show that i love that my mind is trying to decide whether or not i want to like talk about what it is and stuff because i'm not I'm like, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Uh, no, well, let's hold back on that then. <laughs> just because I'm like, I don't. Just in I don't generalities, know. I don't. People, people don't need to come and try to find me at a show. No, no, uh, yeah. But <laughs> I am in a theater festival, and that is my portion of that is going up for three days in November, and I am very much looking forward to being part of that. And then I will have finals in late november into december which is why our recording schedule on our google drive says i just can't do anything in december for the first part of that guys sorry because i'm gonna that's why we're trying to get other things recorded ahead of time so we don't have much delay (laughs) so i do i do that when it comes to theater i am doing that and the next semester i will see what options I have for things I can audition for because Playfest takes up everything on campus during first semester every every year that they do that. But after that, we will see. So I have another question for you then. I do, yeah. Like, so, like, Neil and I were just talking about, like, between game design and podcasting, you get all these, like, uh, ideas about what you want to do, but, and you're participating in the acting aspect of it, but you're also a writer and a, you know, you're literally on the show, storytelling, analyzing the show. Like, yes. have you thought about ideas for plays that you might want to write or that kind of thing? Is that something that you, that bounces around in your head or is that, are you really just focused on the acting part? I, it is, it's, it's real complicated when you're an English and theater major because yes, it has crossed my mind and I have considered it. But it's one of those things where I have no experience in writing plays and in writing scripts. I, oh, I want to take I want to take a playwriting class next semester, and I have to see if that's being offered. You all are getting an insight into sure. my course selection stuff. Hmm. But <laughs> it's one of those things where I love writing, and I do love writing, but coming up with ideas can be difficult, and especially coming up with ideas for plays and especially coming up with ideas for plays to be produced on a college budget. Because sure, my, yeah. my thought process is I'm like, I'm going to write a story. I legitimately just recently wrote a story for one of my classes <laughs> that included werewolves. Um, and that's kind of how my mind, my mind's like, what random fantasy thing am I going to throw into whatever story I'm working on? And I can't do that as much in theater because you have to have stuff you can physically put on stage without much effects as much or Mm. you have to come up with very clever ways to get around it because i clever yeah exactly last last year i saw i saw a show on our campus called the fairy tale lives of russian girls which was a really interesting show if anyone ever wants to read the script for that but that includes at one point someone basically turning into a flashback explaining someone who turns into either a wolf or a bear i can't remember which and kills someone and the way that they perform this on stage was through silhouettes behind an uplifted sheet was part oh, of it nice. it's two people having this conversation and walking through this flashback and what they were seeing and they lift up a sheet as part of it and then have the rest of it play out behind it i'm like that is a really interesting way to do that and the best yeah. way that you could do that so Trying to do the stories that I'm interested in on stage can get difficult, but I have considered writing a play. I have considered writing a lot of things, uh, yeah, sure. but again, I am always busy with things. I'm considering doing uh, NaNoWriMo this year, so people may see updates about oh, that great. on my Twitter. That's National Novel Writing Month for people who don't know. 
Right. Yeah. Where you actually, um, the, the goal is to write 50,000 words in a month yes. in November. It's not about editing. It's not about doing anything else. It's just about getting a beginning, middle and end, basically. So that might be a thing I attempt to do this year. I do a lot of smaller writing. I write a lot of poetry in my downtime because that's very short and easy and stuff. I can just get out and then <laughs> never show people, uh, occasionally show some of it to some people. But podcast world, outside of Emily rants about creative writing for 10 minutes, uh, I have those next two super sweethearts that will eventually be happening. I promise. I'm sorry, internet, who assumed okay. they would all be you done in the same month. Because I remember people, when it the first okay. one came out, people were like, what's next? Next week? Are we getting the next one next week? I'm like, no, guys, these take time. I'm so sorry. I write them all on my own. It's okay. It's all good. But Chalant is happening, and then Cheshroy will be happening after that, because that was actually a super close race on Twitter and did not expect that poll to be that close which was cool but then beyond that there have been a few a few discussions on twitter between me and other podcast people about having me on as a guest to talk about various random things uh so those may be happening in the future if plans can be made it's just no plans can be made right now because of theater and finals cool. of course i can barely do this show sometimes <laughs> So uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about as far as the show is concerned, uh, or at least your guys' history on the show, is what are some of your favorite moments? Neil, do you have any favorite moments from the show? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to get on a soapbox. No, I'm just kidding. The, I mean, obviously. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. No, like I said, getting some of those voice actors on and having that connection with the people that are doing the thing that you guys are talking about and we're producing this podcast about is just mind numbing. And you had alluded to it and you saw on our social media accounts that we actually went and had lunch with Greg and Brandon. And it's just like, why would they want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> just, how risky for them. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> We, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna cut that out. <laughs> that was only too far. But in, in my head, I was like, I'm gonna say so much more that is also too far. You fools! You can't meet strangers on the internet and invite them to a, a social setting. <laughs> How dare you? But no, I like just their gen, just the genuine interest of those that are involved in the show before and now has been. I mean, it's the motivating factor to continue to do the show. Like it just, it's so affirming to know that these people care about what we do and it's just us caring about what they do. And it's just this awesome cycle of back and forth. And so I think that's the biggest thing that stands out to me because I, I mean, it felt like Brandon was caught up like to the episode when we had met him and we're talking about. Yeah. This. He had said that he uh, listens to the show on his way to and from work. Um, I'm, I assume he's listening to other things too, but he, he's got like a short commute, I guess. And so he just listens to little chunks at a time, but he was well into season two when we had lunch with him. Cause he was talking about Emily and, uh, how Greg has got like an in-depth background in DC comics, but Brandon's relatively, relatively new compared to mm -hmm. Greg and how he was relating to that with Emily, Emily and me, our dynamic. It was, uh, it was pretty amazing. So what about you, Emily? What about some of your favorite moments from the show, our show? I'm just, I'm just still not over that concept. Like, to be honest, like you guys, you guys told me about that and like sent me a video of him saying something about that. And I just kind of was like, what is my life? <laughs> like if anybody has ever like, I wonder how Emily feels about being on this podcast. It is consistently me asking the question, what did my life become by accident? Yeah. And it's wonderful and I love it. And how many times can I say that on this recording too? Sure. But aside from that, other favorite moments of the show are, of course, my first discussion episode before I even knew this was going to be a thing that I did <laughs> right. regularly was really cool. And getting that message on Twitter because Rich just sent me a message and was like, hey, you know things I don't. Want to talk about them? And I'm like, yeah. Yes. It wasn't. It wasn't just me either because we had multiple people on social media saying, "Can you please get this person on the show what? to talk about this?" Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There were multiple listeners on Twitter. I was like, I already have an email out uh, to her. We're hoping we can get her on the show soon. I mean, you're posting to the Twitter account like 
everybody, the thousand plus people who follow us on the Twitter account were reading the stuff you wrote. Like, I and know wanted that, to know but more. I didn't know people, other people wanted me to be on the show. I've never yeah. heard that. Guys, I've been doing this for a whole season and nobody like ever told me that. No, they were very clear. I'm pretty sure that you were in those tweets. Like, I, maybe not. Maybe they just sent them to me, but there were tweets, multiple tweets saying, can you please get this person on the show? I want to hear more about this <laughs> that she's talking about. I think I remember seeing like one of those, but I didn't, I didn't know. Sorry. Derailing because sometimes people say nice things and I forget how to talk. Mm-hmm. My, and that's the name of my memoir. Sometimes people say nice things and I forget how to talk. <laughs> but so that was incredible. And then literally in that same that same day that we recorded that you were like by the way we're trying to put together a masks game and like if oh, you right. wanted to be the be the co-host next season maybe you'd also like to come play this game of masks and my mind was like <laughs> and play again <laughs> i was like i've only ever played two games of D &D. i don't i don't know how to tabletop but like i want to be miss martian so much please uh <laughs> yeah so that happened and that that was all within like the same 24 hours so that was a lot that was a lot yeah. of very intense crazy joy and that mass game was nuts and then actually playing that mask game was incredible, even though my mic was doing dumb things. <laughs> and aside from that, more recently, I still cannot believe every time that there is a discussion episode and somehow my name comes up. Like that is just like to me, it always feels like, oh, discussion episodes, those are things Rich is doing and I and I I I'm here to co-host normal episodes and do my thing. And then somehow you and a guest will like start talking about something I said and people will be like, yeah, no, I thought that was so interesting when she said that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what is happening? I am not what? I'm just like, I'm just going to listen to this discussion episode. And then I hear my name get brought up and I'm like, yeah, what? What? That like and they're just like the first the first one that like really stood out to me was some I forget who which guest it was came on and was talking about. I think it was Chris from Gameable was talking about RPGs and was like that thing Emily said oh, right. about shipping names. About shipping I want names. I want to have I want to have something on a character sheet about like special moves that you can only do based on your relationship with another yeah, yeah. character. That was super cool. And I like I had to pause idea. it because I was like, one, how the heck is this something that I somehow influenced? Two, that is an incredible idea, and I want it right now in a game that I can play <laughs> exactly. immediately. Yeah, Chris three, Chris rocked that idea that's for sure. Crazy. Yeah, that was awesome. But above and beyond everything else, I still think one of my favorite moments, not me being mentioned in discussions, is when I when we found out Jason Spizak was going to be on. Yes. I mm. I didn't I didn't ask you at first. I just immediately texted my friend and was like, Hey, Faith, we're getting the voice of Kid Flash on that on that podcast thing I'm doing now. Do you have a question for him? I will yeah. see if we can ask it. I can't make any promises, but I know he is your favorite thing. P just tell me. And she sent me a bunch of ones, and we kind of workshop back and forth what what she wanted to ask. And I sent you one of them, and I was like, hey, yeah, yeah. I have this friend who loves Kid Flash. Can you ask him this question? And you asking him that question and the fact that he then said, hi, Faith. <laughs> is the greatest thing ever because I was getting real time updates from my friend and you had told me that this had happened in the recording and said don't tell her and I wasn't going to I was like oh, no mm -hmm. this is too good I'm keeping this a secret until it goes up and it went up and she snapchatted me and was like I'm about to listen to the episode hope it's good I'm like yeah yeah we asked your question I'm sure you're gonna love it and so she's listening to it and caught her reaction to it, she like heard him say, we have a question from Faith, rewound it, and then recorded it while it was playing because she was just going to get you asking her question and like the start of his response. Right. It and was he a video said, recording. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, hi, Faith. And she <laughs> screamed and That's then immediately so started Snapchatting and texting me in all caps, going, "Oh my god, I can't believe this happened! How did you make this happen? Oh my god!" <laughs> we saw and the video, and she like she like crying. screamed, and the video the video cut out because Snapchat's <laughs> only ten seconds. So yeah, <laughs> it's perfect. That mm. kind of intense joy from her and the fact that I was able to make 
that happen somehow is yeah. still like the the greatest feeling of just I am so happy that this was able to happen and that I was able to give that kind of ridiculous joy to my friend through yeah. this show. I think that was part of my thought process. It was really part of my part thought process about the fan service segment for the same reason. Like people do stuff and people are fans and they do lots of things, but they don't often get recognized for it. And I'm sure so many more people go and look at the thing that that they've created and don't say anything or even like click like or, yep. you know, a little heart or make a comment. And it's just such a small percentage of people who are participating in helping support those people. And fan service does that. And that that question from her as well, which was which was fantastic to hear her reaction as well. It was great. Hey, Faith, when you're listening to this, hope you know, I really I really <laughs> like that I got to do that for you. Yeah, it was awesome. And thanks for sharing that with us, too. For me, I think it was the first time when Quinn Wilson came on the show and talked for two hours about linguistics and psychology and storytelling. It was so good. And it was everything. I think that was the episode that I started getting like I, I got everything I wanted to get from the discussion sessions for everyone else. It was awesome having Darcy on. It was awesome having uh, having Ishan on the show talking about diversity and his history. It was great. And then having Quinn come on and talk about this, like taking that geek conversation into an intellectual space, it changed my view of what we could do. And it was incredible. And on that same vein, like Jeff Stormer coming on and talking about Jack Kirby in the fourth world, like I, and Superman, I just thought, wow, this is going to be a fun conversation about the fourth world. And he ends up like bringing, bringing his a game and talking about the history of all the stuff that I had never heard of Christopher Jones talking about the comics Jason Spizak coming on and just taking over the show like I couldn't <laughs> actually do the do the outro because he I was laughing so hard I couldn't breathe and then stuff like like Chris Chris from uh, Gameable we were just talking about just coming on recently and taking this conversation I thought was going to be a lighthearted fun conversation about Shazam and like a two hour deep dive into philosophy and theology and character development related to superpowers and. I was like, what is happening right now? This is awesome. That concept that every good geek conversation starts, you know, from like this, this seed of inspiration for something fantasy or fantastical. And but then quickly leads into other things, you know, deep, meaningful conversations about life that I love, which is exactly what I wanted the discussion sessions to be. The masks AP, of course, was also amazing. But one of the things that really got me was I didn't know that Crispin doesn't really do interviews uh, when I asked him to come on the show. So we have some mutual friends. So he was the first one I felt comfortable connecting with, at least asking him how we should properly and professionally do this. Cause I didn't know like, what's the, what's the route that is the most respectful. But then when he said uh, on the actual episode itself, that the reason that he wanted to come on the show and was excited to come on the show was because we were looking at Young Justice from a creator's standpoint and trying to help other people understand story and, and inspire them for their own work. And the fact that that, I mean, it really was a cornerstone of what I wanted to do with the show and, and to have it recognized by someone um, as uh, wonderful as Crispin and uh, having that be a reason he wanted to come on the show because maybe we were doing something a little different was uh, was pretty amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, enough of that. Thanks for thanks for diving in a little bit of the history of what you guys are doing, what you guys are going to be doing. We have uh, a couple of reviews and a new Patreon backer. Uh, Alyssa Fitzgerald is a new Gamma Squad member. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Even if you're not a patron, we'll remind you guys again to pop over to the Patreon page now and then and check things out. We're soon going to have that um, audio, uh, at least a part one of the audio, Neil, for the oh, actual yeah, the, play. The other parts so. will follow closely behind because... I believe we've gotten the thumbs up on all of the audio. That's just me saying something so that I can double check. <laughs> all right. That's fantastic. Um, backers can also get all of the actual backers can also get all of our season one and season two show notes now, including our recent end game outline, which includes pretty much everything from the episode, except for uh, Emily's uh, <laughs> tearful uh, thank yous. Cause that was uh, ad libbed in the moment. I'm sorry, Emily, that we did not get something on the page for you. <laughs> You were you were working hard on your thing, and my mind was like, "You should write something down." And I was like, "No, <laughs> I'm not gonna." Let me just ad lib through my tears. 
it, it turned out well enough. People seem to like it. Yes, no, it was good. But we don't, unfortunately, have that on the outline. I'd have to go back and, like, dictate it myself. <laughs> it's like a sentence in brackets, start crying harder. Another oh, sentence, right. brackets, continue crying. Um, and then we have two five-star reviews that we want to read that we haven't gotten to yet. Our first one is by Pete the Master. Yes. Lowercase master. Don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know but what that means. <laughs> they, they titled it Great Post Binging. This is a radical podcast for anyone who's seen the show or plans to watch with. The in-depth discussions about the storytelling of each episode are really cool to hear, even as someone who doesn't do much storytelling themselves. As a dice RPG player especially, it's fun to hear what a GM or DM could do. They also point out the groundwork that the creators of the show laid all throughout the show and gives me a new appreciation for the show that I already loved. Rich, Emily, Caleb, and the various guests are a great way. Oh, that's awesome. Are a great way to stave off those post binge feels until outsiders. Great job on the actual play and keep it up. Thanks so much for a choice podcast. Awesome. Thank you, Pete, the lowercase master. Yes. Contact us on Twitter and let us know why it's a tiny M. <laughs> We need to know. I must know. Okay. Uh, so our next review is from GeForce1985, uh, and they titled it My Sequel to the Arkham Sessions. And what they have to say for us is, as of today, I'm at episode 35, almost caught up with what's been posted. Rich and Caleb's knowledge of and passion for the subject matter is unquestionable. It took a few episodes for me to get used to Emily's co-hosting style for season two, but I think I like her better as she offers a starkly different background and perspective that makes the dynamic between her and Rich more insightful. I especially appreciate that when they criticize the show, which is rare, they do so constructively, offering insight as to why certain mistakes happen in media so often or why some tropes are so easy to misuse or abuse and using other real-life examples as to how it can be done right, rather than just cutting to shreds anything they don't completely agree with. But best of all is the love for the characters who make the show run, characters who, as youths, experience lots of change and cope with it in a variety of ways not always adaptively but almost always relatable and full of heart arkham sessions one of my favorite podcasts is nearly done analyzing batman the animated series and i was wondering what i'll do if they don't do another series with a third season of young justice confirmed i think i know where to get my fix that's awesome. Man, if you guys haven't heard Arkham Sessions, do you guys know Arkham yeah. Sessions? Yes, I've I was going to say, it. it is a perfect sequel. Definitely go check those out. Arkham Sessions is a psychologist uh, and her partner analyzing from a psychological standpoint every episode of Batman the Animated Series. And it's, I listened to, recently I was listening to the one, it was a mess, it was a really weird one. It was, it was one with Killer Croc and Baby Doll. Uh, and Baby Doll is a criminal, a woman who has this, uh, who has a disease in which she always looks incredibly young, even though she's in her 30s or whatever, and was a child star. And she and Croc kind of develop this relationship that's really bizarre. And depending on how you look at it, and um, man, their analysis of that episode from a storytelling standpoint and everything else was incredible so definitely go check the arkham sessions out i am uh, firing them an email here pretty soon to see if we can get them on the show to talk about uh, yeah, to talk yeah. about young justice which would be fan that may be another hopefully two hour double ed- episode and uh, that's it i think that's uh, i think that's it for this update uh, of course the best way to support our show is to share it with a friend you can also support us with a five-star review which we will read on the air uh, with one of our future intel updates Leaving a rating and review pushes us up in the search ranks, of course, and helps other people find the show. Remember to please continue hashtag by YJ Comics on Comixology so you can read along with us when we start airing our reviews of those in December. And to buy the show somewhere online until the DC streaming service launches. You can also now use hashtag Young Justice Outsiders when talking about season three online. And if you want to help us get more episodes, more secret origins, more actual play podcasts, and all of the other stuff that we do, 
please consider supporting us through Patreon. For just a few dollars a month, you can help us do even more with the show while getting some great rewards for yourself. And remember... I stole this because I had access to the outline. (laughs) Stay whelmed, everyone. (laughs) I love it. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Woo! You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Stay whelmed.